Hey, what's up guys, it's Mugalori here, and I just wanna thank all you guys for being just massive supporters here on this channel. We almost there at 20K, I can just taste it. So we just gotta keep it pushing. I'm gonna just try to keep pushing as hard as I can as far as content. And it appears that a lot of you guys value what I say, love and hear my point and what I think about the things that's going on in the gaming industry, rather it's just gaming itself or the cultural aspect, the social aspect, of what's going on in entertainment and gaming. So I really appreciate it. So let's see if we can get to 20K. So what's going on? 2024, we're only a couple days in this year and things are just crazy as far as great game announcements, but more importantly, the cultural social aspect of gaming uh, here in 2024. And we already covered just a couple days ago about the Tekken director being accused of racism. And if you guys haven't checked that video out, I advise you to check this out. But when it comes to today's topic, we're going to talk about Stellar Blade because Stellar Blade is uh, amongst some controversy right now. And everybody's debating over it over the internet. And it's not because of its gameplay or when the game is going to release. Well, it has a lot to do with the game model itself, the female protagonist, because we just got a reveal of what the motion capture model looks like when it comes to doing all the performance and what the character and who the character is designed after um, in this game. And once that happened, the internet blew up and everybody started arguing and debating about it and started questioning Western developers and how they design women and how they depict women in modern gaming today. So before we step into this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell for more gaming content here on this channel. So we're gonna dive into this topic because this is very controversial. It shouldn't be controversial. I mean, you can see with your very own eyes, before we even get into the whole Stellar Blade situation and the motion capture model herself, um, I just want to just talk about the overall aspect of how Western developers depict women and how Eastern developers depict women when they pretty much incorporate them in their game, especially when you're pretty much taking their likeness and then you pretty much translating it over into the video game itself. I mean, I already covered it in a couple videos. If you want to go check that out as well, you can check that out in the description below or I'll post it up in the card. But this is the video that pretty much just like set the trend, set it in motion for people to have um, this discussion. It pretty, pretty much brought out into the mainstream. But the thing is, just recently I had made a post. I had saw this collage showing how Western developers depict women in video games. And I took the collage, I didn't create it myself. I seen it because it was being shared over the internet and I decided to share it to my audience. And my God, the debates was just going on. And as you can see, the whole collage of Western developers and how they depict women. And also there's probably I say there's one I would probably disagree with that's on the collage, which is the female protagonist in Grand Theft Auto 6. I don't think she's bad at all. I think they did a pretty good job. Rockstar did a pretty good job with her and how they just, how the women and the female models look in the game in general in Grand Theft Auto 6 is like crazy. So I can, I pretty much disagree with that. And then many people talk about Poison Ivy is just a child, but when it comes to children, it's not talking about the hotness of them, it's just the overall design of how they depict, especially the female children, especially in, in games. But that Poison Ivy is just fucking hideous. And a lot of people had a lot to say about that. But I digress. So it had brought up this discussion once again, is this done on purpose from Western developers? Now that we see a lot of perfect example of how Eastern developers depict women when they take them from motion capture and then translate them over into the game. So, remember, we talked about it before, how East Western developers depict women, especially when you look at the haircuts. The haircuts tell it all and explain it all about what type of game that you're gonna be getting when you see the female protagonist that looks like this. And then also, we talked about how black women are depicted. They take the most hideous designs for black women and they just hit them with the ugly stick. And when I give my opinion on it, there's a lot of people that agree, but then you have other people who just see nothing completely wrong with it, but that's fine. That's their, that's their opinion. But despite those examples, despite those examples, many people would say that, hey, no, you know, Asian developers take the female models and they make them look anime, they look, look, make them look more cartoony, unrealistic, and then Western developers make them look 
realistic and I, it just boggles my mind how is that being realistic when you actually see the realistic model from western developers and then they and then they in stark contrast look completely different from the game model but then when you look at the eastern developers all they did was take the exact person this the exact mo caption model and then put her exactly in the game and she looks the same they almost look like identical twins so which one is more realistic the eastern side or is the western side which one is it because it just baffles me so i digress but the most important thing after we had this discussion over the internet and many people had this discussion over the internet but we never had somebody within the industry themselves weigh in on the discussion and that's where we fall into Alana Pierce. Alana Pierce, if you don't know who she is, a personality on IGN where she uh, she did a lot of hosting. She was like a female host on the, on the channel. And back then when I used to watch IGN, my favorite was Jessica Chobot. And then of course, Naomi Kyle. And then you had Alana Pierce. I think those were the three wonderful ladies that were on, on IGN that brought a lot of eyes, brought a lot of viewers to the channel to go watch what's going on in IGN. But she, after all these years, she eventually left um, IGN and started her own YouTube channel. But she has been still been involved in the gaming industry. And then she was pretty much recruited to Santa Monica Studios. And she became a video game writer. And she done some work along on um, the, God of, the recent God of War series and many other games as well. And even featured in games um, as well as that. And you can go check that out. Um, as well, but when it comes to Alana Pierce, she definitely she decided that hey, I'm going to weigh in on this um, as well. So she pretty much left a video saying that what now women are ugly in video games, and she pretty much gave her reasons why women look the way they look in video games today compared to what it was like a long time ago. And you gotta hear her response. I, it, it just it just blew my mind. It just baffled me with like a camera in front of their face motion capture is when they're moving their bodies performance capture is able to pick up more nuances of the human face and so hand in hand with improved graphical fidelity in video games you are able to actually capture more like micro movements in the human face so your face scans need to be more accurate and in general a little bit more human thus more flawed 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 Humans have a bunch of flaws on their faces. This is a very common part of being human. Nobody's fully symmetrical. Nobody looks cartoonish. So as video games in general are getting less cartoonish, again, this is why I think it's specific to the West. I feel like there are still a lot of Japanese games made with like more anime art styles. It is easier to make somebody look perfect, essentially, and thus less like a real human. But you have to have more accurate face scans that can't just be about symmetry, where like maybe they would have created a face that looks a lot more cartoonish because then you are picking up the facial expressions, those micro expressions in people's faces. And you are often taking a model and mapping it onto the performance capture and blending those two things, which is an awkward process in general, especially if your models are different to your. Could you believe that she actually said that? It, it, it I don't understand. I, I don't understand. I'm not sure if this was a way to protect her colleagues or to somehow shield the industry that's going on in the Western side you know, of, of, of the gaming industry, but that makes no sense. After what I showed what Capcom was able to do, what Konami was able to do, and many other Eastern studios were able to <laughs> pretty much do when taking a real life model and putting them in game compared to Western studios, that baffled my mind that she even came up with an excuse like that. And not only that, Alana was in the Cyberpunk games. And the thing about the Cyberpunk games is another perfect example. We had Keanu Reeves, who also played as a character in the game. And he was pretty much one-to-one -one what he looks like in real life and what he looks like in the game. They're pretty much like identical twins. And then we can't forget about Idris Elba. He was also in Cyberpunk. And you look at the trans, the translation or the transferring from the real life Idris Elba over to the game. And you can pretty much not like, like say that, damn, they like the same individual. You know who they are the moment you play the game. You can recognize them. Now, here's the thing. When I made the post about the collage itself, somebody had posted and said, yeah, Alana Pierce was in Cyberpunk. Uh, I think they did a good job. 
And I said, wait a minute, a lot of peers is in Cyberpunk? And now I just started playing Cyberpunk, and I've been playing for quite some time, just got into the game, really enjoy it and everything. But the funny part about it is, I encountered Alana Pierce in the game and didn't even know it was her. I had no idea it was her. When it comes to Keanu Reeves, when it came to Aegis Elba, you can recognize them. You can see them from a distance. And you know what else is crazy? Kojima's in Cyberpunk. When I first popped open Cyberpunk for the very first time and I was in one of the missions where we had to enter, one of the, uh, enter this building and we had to sneak in. And we're walking around this, uh, this diner area and when, as I'm walking by, I'm looking at all the NPCs talking. I was like, wait a minute. Is that Kojima right there? Is that Kojima? That be, is that, is that, that's Kojima, ain't it? That's Kojima. I knew it's not Kojima. I was able to recognize that Kojima was in the game. But when it came to Alana Pierce, I had no idea it was her. She, like, like she, like, like you can see some of the features of Alana. But when you put Alana, real life Alana, right on the side, and then you put her uh, cyberpunk NPC, you can see the contrast. You can see that, oh, like, man, like, unless I'm a big Alana fan, maybe I can pick up on, on the, if that's Alana or not. But I had no idea when I ran across her that it was her. I had no idea. So I don't understand what's going on, how the male characters just have this easy transition from real life to gaming models and then when it comes to the female models i'm talking uh, when it comes to like these western style games it, for some reason like they have a hard time or something's going on with the female characters that it just it just baffled me but stellar blade this is where all of the conversation is headed this is where everybody's talking about this because now it's starting to hit the i guess you could say the normies because the normies had no idea that this is even a, a debate a discussion so when you're a normie you don't know anything that's going on in the culture war you're just trying to play your games you're just trying to live your daily life and everything like that but then you start to notice normies start to notice certain things that certain things is like not adding up here and that's what started happening when the model the korean model herself was revealed um to be the motion capture and the face for stellar blade now it's the thing that's that's really really crazy about this is because we live in an industry like or in the time right now where i've been discussing about stellar blade for some time um when it comes to the the game itself and whether or not it's going to be censored we talked about it we discussed it and everything but the thing is we have people when it comes to the gaming industry where they talk about the depiction of women of these unrealistic uh, beauty standards these unrealistic body proportions and then we have digital foundry you know digital foundry i always had respect for digital foundry when it came to um when it comes down to breaking the game down when it comes to it, the game's performance you know frame rates and and everything like that i always used to go to them for that and then when they compare the different games on the different consoles and the performance of those i always had respect for these guys but it was the first time where i really got turned off by these guys when Stellar Blade was revealed, they gave their opinions on Stellar Blade. Now, I respect their opinions when it comes to, when they talk about the ga games itself, you know, the, the, the what works behind the games and how these games run. But when it comes to their social political <laughs> point of view, I don't give a fuck about what they have to say. You gotta hear the response they had to say when they weighed in on Stellar Blade itself and the female protagonist. Uh I do think the character model was actually like very distracting in not a good way because like they put the camera angles chosen. It just felt like this game seems like a, a game that came out in like 002 in terms of its, you know, like character design. It's like a bit old and, and not flattering, I don't think, for a modern audience. In comparison to something like Forspoken, which has, you know, uh, I mean, yes, it has a much more realistic looking character designs. Uh, it's not these hyper proportioned. 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 It's not these hyper proportioned uh, something or another. But it also seemed, I don't know, a bit more grounded in a way that I found much more appealing than what we saw here. From a and general... this is what I'm talking about. These dudes have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to this. And these are the type of males that's run. That's that people see as the figureheads or the or the people that people will go to to get their information from these soy drinking beta males and their opinions 
doesn't matter. But this is the current state that we're in. These are the type of males that's running our gaming industry and that's running our entertainment, which you need to check out my video, the, the, collapse, the collapse of <laughs> the male image and what's been going on when it comes to males in modern society in general. You need to go check that out. But these guys are a perfect example of that. Like, no one cares about your opinion, and I lost a lot of respect for them for them even saying that. And now that we have the reveal of the action motion, the actual motion capture model of the main protagonist for Stellar Blade, it debunks everything that people have to say when it comes to unrealistic beauty standards and unrealistic body proportions. Because I discussed before in a video talking about body proportions, which you can also check out as well, women come in all different shapes and sizes. And a lot of these body proportions that many people would say is unrealistic, you can find a woman that it looks exactly like that. So what is it? It doesn't make any sense at all. And when you look at society, when it comes to this whole body positivity, this is literally body shaming when it comes to this where you come to censoring women's body and then on top of that when you look at the models itself especially when it comes to stellar blade or when it comes to this whole movement in which i find like so hypocritical is because if it's about equality and it's about body positivity and when it comes to the body proportions and everything like that it's not spread evenly across the board. There's nothing equal about it because it's only directed towards women. You don't see that happening to men. As I said before, when it comes to motion capturing the male model and you bring them over to the game, they're pretty much identical, one-to-one -one and like twins. But when it comes to Western developers, when they take female models, they look nothing like them. It's like they beat them with an ugly stick. So when it comes to this, it's not evenly done across the board. And another thing I want to point out, which I find funny, it, my daughter recently, or just a couple months ago, um, she one day she walked in and saw me looking at some clips of Resident Evil. So my daughter never really played Resident Evil, and my daughter's 14 years old. So she played games, but Resident Evil was something that she never played before. But she came in and she saw Leon, Leon Kennedy. And my daughter saw Leon, the game model, the game model itself. And fell in love with Leon. Oh, she and then I introduced her to Final Fantasy VII, the OG one, and then remake. And she's oh man, she's falling over Cloud, Sephiroth. It, I, I, it's just it's just so funny. But back to Leon, my daughter just fell in love with Leon, and then all she does is watch fan fix with Leon and and got fan art of Leon. She's just in love with the character Leon. She just thinks he's handsome and and cute and all this other type of stuff. But one day I was in my room, I was working on a video and my daughter came in and she was like, father, how come you didn't tell me that Leon is based after a real person? I was like, what are you talking about? She said, dad, I, I, I didn't know that in Resident Evil that the characters in the game are based after real people. I was like, oh yeah, the motion capture. And this would all, this would prove my point of what I'm talking about is because as you see right here, this is the male model to Leon Kennedy is based after him. And you can see the comparison between the two, a perfect translation from real life to the actual game itself. And you and my daughter only thought that this was just a video game character. But then when she seen the model, my daughter fell in love with the real life model as well, because it's pretty much one to one, similar to or straight across the board. And as I said before, Capcom, Eastern developers done a good job with that. Also, Claire Redfield, the same way. They took her, translated her, Jill Valentine, everything. And this is what we're talking about when it comes to this. So if they can do it, then what's the excuse for Western developers? It just doesn't make sense at, at all. And then look at Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact is the same way. We have all these different motion captures. The technology is there. It's just why, why, and the question is why Western developers is is doing what they're doing there you if you don't believe that there's an agenda going on then i can sell you a bridge but i can i can sell you anything at this point i can sell you sand and you live at a desert i can sell you snow and you live in alaska i can sell you anything at this point if you still don't think that something isn't up or something isn't going on within the industry itself especially on the western side um, of things and the funny part about it is after the stellar blade model was revealed then we go into body shaming or body shaming uh tactics from these people because you had somebody said that if you like this model then you like a then you, that means you're attracted to a 12 year old girl 
that makes no sense this is what i'm this is exactly what i'm talking about like when it comes to body proportions which i also did a video on that women come in all shapes and sizes and what also debunks this is also cosplayers i shouldn't have to repeat myself just recently this this uh, uh cosplayer i think she goes by the name crystal i think she does a beautiful job this sister does a beautiful job with cosplaying and she just recently cosplayed elena now when you look at elena from street fighter 3 you would say that's unreal people would say that's unrealistic no one can look like elena no one can contort their body or have a figure like that in real life and many people would say that but then when you see her and she's cosplaying Elena, look at that frame on her, look at her body, look at the muscle definition that she has. These body proportions are attainable. These are achievable. So like we need to get out of this head that a lot of things that we see is unrealistic or this is putting these unrealistic standards on women when there's plenty of women out there that looks like this in real life. Like we need to stop using that as an argument when it's constantly being debunked every every time. It's just it's just funny. It just baffles my mind. I just don't understand at all. But that's pretty much it for this video. There's nothing more I can say about this. I think the Stellar Blade situation, the stupidness that Digital Foundry even said when they make that remark. When you look at when you look at these people and the things that they say, it just doesn't make sense. Asian developers keep showing up, showing out on these developers, especially from the West, when it comes to how they depict women, and not even just women, men as well. Like, men makes that transition over perfectly as well. So, what is going on here? Like, I like to ask that question. I like to ask you that question as well. Is this done on purpose? Is there some type of an agenda going on when it comes to the female form and female beauty when it comes to how they depict women especially with western developers compared to how women are be depicted in video games from eastern developers so definitely like to hear your thoughts in the comment sections below if you enjoyed this video hit the subscribe button the notification bell for more gaming content here on this channel this is Mugen Lord signing off i'll see you game fiends later peace out